All right, welcome to today's video. What we are going to do today, something a little different, something I haven't normally done on this channel, but we're going to be reviewing some Pokemon trading card game online gameplay. What this is from is from my local game shop's uh, Summer Team Challenge Qualifiers, the first qualifier that we just did this last Thursday. Uh, my local game shop is actually has a pretty competitive Pokemon scene. Uh, our team from the Spring Team Challenge is actually currently in the top eight, and the person who I'm going to be playing against in this first round match is someone who is on that spring team challenge team. So I'm trying to qualify for the summer team challenge to represent my local game shop, Game Vault El Paso, here in El Paso, Texas. So we're just going to get right into it, show off this first round. My opponent, who again is already on our spring team challenge team, a super competitive player, one of the best guys that plays in our local game shop, is going to be playing ADP Zashian. Um, I'm going to be playing Lucario Zashian. For my deck, I kind of had some direct deck paralysis about what I wanted to play, I ended up landing on just the old standard Lucario and Melmetal with no Corviknight. I've been playing with a lot of Corviknight VMAX in my Lucario and Melmetal lists to like have that free retreat, switching between the Zacian, switching between them, moving the metal energy around. For this round, I'm just going with a pretty standard uh, Lucario and Mel Melmetal and Zacian list. I feel I'm pretty confident going into this one, um, seeing that my, there's an open deck list, seeing that my opponent is playing ADP Zacian with Crushing Hammer. It's a matchup I've played hundreds of times with this Lucario Melmetal list. So let's get right into it and see how it goes. All right, going into our first game here, we decided, we won the coin toss and decided to go first. I wanted to do that to take away the desire of my opponent's ADP to go first. And really I'm not too worried about what I start with, whether I go first or second. I do want to try and take away what my opponent wants. So they had to mulligan. This actually worked out really well for us here. Uh, because we got to take a Zacian off the top of the deck here. Oh no, we, we don't take the Zacian. I think our first draw is the Zacian, um, which works out pretty well for us. We do get to play the Tag Call as well, getting us our Lucario and Melmetal. And I think we grab, what are we going to grab here? The Cynthia and Caitlyn probably? Oh no, we go with the Malo and Lana. All right, because uh, we already had the Cynthia and Caitlyn in our hand. Um, it is sometimes nice to go second with the Luke Metal deck because we get to play the Guzman Hala uh on that first turn to get our you know important stadiums out if we need the power plant or to fix our energy if we're missing energy or whatever and i think we're actually going to end up seeing that next turn with the guzman hala although we do get the the um coating metal energy right there so nothing to worry about we are playing the Aegislash, slash and it's a little unfortunate that we had to start the Aegislash slash this game it is a tech that is meant for the altaria and decidui i know that people at my lgs there's a couple people that like to play that um, Altaria and Decidueye, so I wanted to be able to tech against it, not automatically lose against them. My opponent is playing ADP Hammers, and you saw that they actually missed the first Hammers there. I want to say we actually get decently lucky with the Hammers. It's I don't know if it's... I think we're definitely on the better side of the 50-50 for the most part, which is what helps us out here. Um, you know, as we can see, he's able to play the uh, Dedene and Dedene Charge, change his first hand so if we had been able to go second play the guzman hala maybe get that out could have been a thought process for us but we do like the fact oh he goes for the other hammers here uh so he's gone for both hammers and he actually hits that one so we're 50 50 right now he throws my energy into the graveyard plays the crowbat he's just going through his deck so much this turn and this is one of the best players at my lgs so i'm a little intimidated at this point he's got you know going second for you know going first turn going second he probably much got exactly what he wanted i was a little worried he's gonna have the enemy switch and be able to first or the energy switch and be able to first turn or did he get the the energy off the intrepid sword i can't remember exactly either way yeah i don't think he metal i don't think he metal saucer um we are looking here um and i'm thinking i'm gonna go with the guzman hala because i want to be able to stop i know he's gonna have a dedene i know he's gonna have another dedene i know he's going to have a um uh what am i thinking of the mawile gx as well so i really want this power plant and then i also think it's super beneficial in this matchup to have the metal goggles i have to grab a cave of toughness here i think i'm actually probably going to put it back and grab the metal goggles i think that's going to be a little bit better for us especially once we full wall gx full metal gx we do want the coating metal energy this list is playing a capture energy i'm not sure if i'm actually in love with it i think if i play luke metal again next week i'm probably not going to be rocking the capture energy um but it's something i've kind of been tinkering with playing a little bit it's not my favorite thing in the world uh this this hand though we do grab the 
metal energy, um, the goggles, and the power plant. So we're going to throw that metal energy back onto the Lucario metal, 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 which is totally fine here. And I think we're probably just going to get to Intrepid Sword again. Do we throw that on Lily's Pope at all? Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, we haven't found, we have the Malalana, but we haven't found a good way to switch and get our uh, Aegis Slash out of the active slot, but we do rip our nice switch card right off there. So I'm assuming he, yeah, he's just going to go altered creation right here. And we're just going to get to Lucario and Mel Metal, Full Metal Wall GX with that this turn. Remove that energy, put him all the way back. He's only going to have one metal energy left on the field on the Zashi, bench Zashi and V. And we're going to be taking 30 less damage for all of our metal Pokemon the rest of the game, plus the ones that have those metal saucers are going to be taking an extra 30 less damage, so they're going to be taking 60 less damage. That was a quick turn for us. <laughs> One thing you're probably going to see, um, I'm not the world's fastest player. I'm very methodical, and um, I'm often in the tank a little bit thinking about my plays, so he is able to, right here, power up his Zacian completely with the attachment and the metal saucer. He's lacking the switch, though, he's, so he's going to have to go into the Intrepid Sword. So, a little scared about that, but we're thinking here that, you know, if we're able to get rid of the Zacian, we're going to be in a really great spot, because uh, he's just going to have no energy whatsoever. I think what I'm thinking here, though, is I'm just going to power up the Zacian. Am I going to boss up to potentially soften up the, the Zacian? I don't think so. I think I really just want to hit into the ADP for 50 to kind of so soften it up, make it vulnerable to one brave blade but i definitely am thinking about bossing up oh do i do it this is interesting <laughs> played this uh match last thursday okay i decided not to i was i'm thinking right here like that's just a pretty oh i just do it okay so we're just gonna steel fist and accelerate i mean unless he he already i know that he's playing an intrepid sword or it's not an Intrepid Sword. He's playing a Rusted Sword. But he already put the Balloon on it. So I know that he's not going to be able to get back up to 260 damage. Unless he Tool Scrappers his own Balloon. And plays the um, Rusted Sword. He's going to boss up... What is this? He bossing up my own... Oh, he bosses up the Aegislash. And what's nice about having the Goggles is he wasn't able to boss up the Zashian and knock it out. So he's going to knock out the Aegislash, take three prizes... Putting me on the clock, because if he kills my Zashian now, I'm in big trouble. I know I'm I know I'm one metal energy drop away, so I have to pull out the Lily's Poke at all. I know I can easily move it out. But we do have the Cynthia and Caitlyn. I think we're gonna be able to just uh, use Cynthia and Caitlyn to get a boss back and draw three cards, hoping that we just get into a metal energy here. We don't need that second Lucario Mel Metal. I have to imagine, yeah, I'm definitely grabbing the boss. That's just a pretty obvious play. And we hit a metal energy off of that. Big plays. We are going to be removing... Um, are we going to just get a Lily's Pokeball? Okay. I'm assuming we're going to Lily's Pokeball here. Not waste our switch yet. Because we're going to need the switches to get the Zacian out of the active. And then Lily's Pokeball again. But we are going to be able to one-hit my opponent's Zacian V. Something he is not able to do against my Zacian. Uh, because I have the full metal wall boost and the metal goggles. We remove all energy except one metal energy from my opponent's ADP. And uh, we're feeling pretty good at this point. We are feeling pretty, pretty good at this point. My opponent does promote the ADP. Only has the metal energy. I think probably what he's thinking is that... He's going to be able to tank a hit with it. Especially since I wasn't able to Steel Fist and soften it up early. Plus, the way the prize trade rate takes out works out is that even if he kills it, I'm still going to be stuck on one prize. I want to say he's running... I actually don't think he's running any recess stamps because he's running Hammer's ADP. Um, so I don't think he has room for the stamps. But I did get a boss's orders off of my prizes, which means that unless he has some way to manipulate my hand, this is probably just going to be boss-boss game. We drew into our other Zashian, and looks like we're going to be able to Metal Saucer and attach to the Zashian. He's already used three Hammers, so I feel pretty safe using my energy, and it'd be really nice to have another Zacian to start taking out some things. I'm going to boss up the Crobat. Um, it looks like I'm, I'm probably just going to switch into the Lily's Pokedol and then go straight back into my powered-up Zacian. And if I'm able to get... 
a metal energy off the prizes or off my draw, then we have game because we'll just be able to boss up and retreat. Boss up the Dedene and retreat for kill. So we do get the metal energy. So unless my opponent Marnie's my hand, we're looking at a nice dub in our very first game, which is against against this opponent in particular. I mean, I was pretty nervous. I mean, as nervous as I can be coming into this match because... I knew how good my opponent was. I knew he was a very strong opponent. So uh, he kind of maybe can see the writing on the wall, and he is just going to scoop that one up. Uh, he did ask to go first in this round, so he's going to get what he wants to do with ADP. And this guy loves to play ADP. He's played ADP in a lot of tournaments. I think he played has been playing ADP throughout the team challenge where they just made top four. I think I said in the intro that they were in top eight uh, since recording that. My t my LGS has actually made it, I want to say, into the. I think they made it into the top four. We have a nicer start this time in terms of being not having to start the Aegis Lash. We do start the Lucario Melmetal. Um, the Zacian V is kind of a dead card. It's not really a, a card that's going to be very helpful for us because it only stops the VMAX attacks. My opponent, obviously, not running any VMAX in the ADP list. Um, we do have three Zacians. Not great. Not loving that. Um, we do get to go second, which means if we get the Guzman Hallow, we'll be able to use it right away. We can use a Cynthia and Caitlyn right away to draw three cards. So we have at least a hop in our hand, basically. Um, we draw the other Cynthia and Caitlyn, so that's how that works. I imagine... Uh, are we thinking about Tay calling for the Guzman Hala? I think that's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, we are going to see that the Guzman Hala is prized this game. And at this point, I... <laughs> just you see me running through my deck being like where is my guzman hala if i could just put down a power plant my opponent is only playing one chaos well this was an open uh deck list tournament so i knew what my opponent was playing i knew he was only playing one chaotic swell this game and uh so i knew that if i put the power plant down early there's a very good chance that he would not be able to get rid of it unfortunately no guzman hala so i'm potentially gonna be missing an energy drop here along with not getting that power plant down we do Cynthia and Caitlyn draw three cards. We do, luckily enough, get our energy drop for this turn. Are we going to put it on the Lucario and Mill Metal? I think so, because we got to be queuing up. We got. We really need to full metal wall. It's very important to be full metaling wall, full metal walling before Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia uses Ultimate Ray. That stops him from accelerating, because if you full metal wall after he uses Ultimate Ray, he's still going to have, most likely, a, a fully powered Zacian v on the bench so i'm definitely not sure why i'm stalling probably worried about i'm not worried about hammers is really what it comes down to i i don't want to get hammered um and so i'm gonna put that on i'm worried about getting hammered he has four hammers you know he hit what he, i think he only hit one for three in the last game so he's due in terms of hammers uh, i do intrepid sword i get another um i think i get the power yeah i get the power plant and the uh metal saucer along with a metal energy off the intrepid sword he is going to be able to altered creation gx this turn and i want to say he is able to throw down into dene and i'm feeling really bad with his power plant in my hand <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's just like i was just a couple cards off of the power plant and i could have been able to shine. oh he doesn't he just altered creation gx is right away so this will be nice i get to just throw down the power plant here and I get to, I top deck a metal energy, so I get to full metal wall and remove all energy from my opponent's side of the field. That's pretty sweet. Not sure what I'm considering here. <laughs> not, not too worried about that. I'm thinking about using the Cynthia and Caitlyn, it looks like, to draw a few cards. I think that's maybe questionable because... Like, what else am I looking for? I'm not looking for an energy. I'm not looking for a stadium. Yeah, I think I smartly don't Cynthia and Caitlyn, because if I get Marnie this next turn, uh, it just kind of turns the Cynthia and Caitlyn into a waste, and then I no longer am able to, like, get a boss's orders back from the graveyard. That's really what the Cynthia and Caitlyn is here for, is to get boss back and to get Mallow and Lana back to stall it out. Boss, if you're in an offensive mode, or Mallow and Lana if you're playing defense. Uh, so he is able to quick ball for... The Zashian. Um, he's also going to be able to go find an energy attachment. I want to say he powers this up decently quickly. I think he might have like a metal saucer or two in the graveyard. Yeah. Metal saucer right there. Very nice with my opponent. He's going to have the metal attachment from his hand. 
and oh, he's going to boss up the Zacian, which is smart because he's not going to let me get a free hit on uh, on his ADP. He does have the Crobat. Unfortunate. I'm pretty sure this is a one of Crobat list. And there we see the Intrepid Sword. That spells quite a bit of trouble for us because if this he it's only playing one Intrepid Sword, but it's actually just a huge card in this matchup being the Intrepid Sword. He hits the hammer, removes all the energy from my Zashian. So now I'm sitting with a energyless Zashian and Lucario Melmetal on the bench. My opponent <laughs> has to, <laughs> he throws down the Dedene. I'm assuming he didn't forget. Ah, no, he probably, maybe he didn't forget about the power plant and he threw it down thinking that he was going to draw. Um, we do have a metal energy in the graveyard. I don't think I should Metal Saucer to Lucario Melmetal. I think it'd actually be smartest to switch and then Metal Saucer. I have a lot of Metal Saucers. I could actually use a Marnie right now. I mean, it wouldn't be ideal, but my hand's uh, a little stuck, really. We're not drawing anything. We're not switching out. We're not... You know, we've had all of these Zashians pretty much from the beginning of the game. The Zamazenta, that's, you know, really useless to us. Yeah, we do end up switching. I'm assuming we're going to Metal Saucer. And then if I had to guess, we're going to Cynthia and Caitlyn here. I would hope, I'm thinking I'm going to probably throw away the Zamazenta. Yeah, Zamazenta, not a useful card in this matchup. Nothing to retrieve. And we do a pull an energy. We get an energy drop. We have the metal goggles. That's very important because the metal goggles prevent um, the one hit KO onto our Lucario Mel Metal. So metal goggles are an absolutely huge play there. It's just, it's so much. It's 30 up, 30 down. That's this matchup. It's just that increment of 30, whether it's the plus 30 from the Ultra Creation, the plus 30 from the Intrepid Sword, the minus 30 from the full metal wall, the minus 30 from the goggles. He does have the energy attachment. He has the switch and he's going to come in. Oh, he bosses up. Okay. Yeah. I want to say I probably get boss boss gamed here. Yeah. He bosses up the Zashian He's going to take three prizes off of that. I, I want to say he's able to do something similar again. Oh, that's, what am I thinking there? Am I? Oh, I'm thinking I want a Metal Saucer and switch and hit for 150 and two hit the Zashian, hoping he doesn't isn't able to switch. He could just retreat. I wonder if I'm missing the idea that he could probably just retreat. <sighs> wonder if it would have actually been... No, because there's really nothing I could build up. I'm trying to think. I wonder if it would have been better to Mallow to put out the Lucario... And Melmetal first? Nah, this is probably fine. Because if he gets hit, then I'll be able to Mallow and Lana heal, probably. Okay, I, I'm, I'm okay with this. We do hit 150. Setting up the two-hit KO on the Zashian V. However, I want to say my opponent is just able to handle me here. He switches out. Into the Crobat. Energy switches. Does he energy, he energy switches to his own Zashian? I can't remember why he does this. Any Marnies. So he's not bossing me in this game. I'm actually totally fine with him Marnieing me out of this hand. That's totally kosher. Oh, okay, this is what he does. He tool scrappers, and I think he just manually attaches. Oh no, he metal saucers, okay. So the energy switch, kind of pointless. So he has to metal saucer, and then he has the switch again. He just had all of his switches. He he had the he had the gas this time. And because he was able to tool scrapper, he hits for Exaxis 160. Um, I was gonna type to him that I wanted to go first in the next matchup, but uh, I could see that it was ending too quickly, and I'm not a fast enough typer. So we take the L there. It's one and one. I do get to declare which uh whether I would like to go first or second. I decide that I want to go first, obviously, because that's better against the ADP. And I this looking looking just like game one, I have to start Age of Slash, and I have the Guzma and Hall in my hand the first turn, and I'm kind of thinking, 
man, I kind of would have liked to go second. He does not have quite as good of a start this time. He has to start the Crobat. Um, I am starting the Capture Energy. I kind of, didn't I kind of, you know, I kind of talked bad about the Capture Energy to start the game, but it actually worked out really well for me here because I was able to get the Zashi into Intrepid Sword. So you know what? <laughs> might be keeping the might be keeping the capture energy. It kind of saved me um, and smoothed me out this first game. My opponent is going to grab water energy. I think they're in a quick ball for ADP. I imagine they'll probably attach water energy and pass. Unless they have a Zacian, they metal saucer. Maybe they're trying to. Oh, he has the chaotic swell. He's seen enough. Oh, he does. He has a professor's research. Okay, so he's got. He has. Um, Metal Entry in the Graveyard. All he needs is a Metal Pokemon. There it is. He needs a Metal Saucer. He needs an Energy Switch. And he needs a Switch. So that's a tough ask. But he potentially could turn one Altered Creation. He does get to Dedene. So he's cycling through that deck. He's down to three cards. He's seen half his deck at this point. But he just has to Altered Creation. Unfortunate for him. I know he was just looking for just a couple cards. So we're in a spot here that we obviously know that we need to full metal wall soon. We need to get ready to do that. Uh, I think, what do we do here? Do we just Guzma and Howla? Get rid of the Chaotic Swell, hope that we find our power plant again. I think I, I think I put too much priority on the Guzma and Howla. I think it might have been better to actually play out my hand and then Marnie this turn. Let's see if I do that. No, okay, I think this is actually a mistake. Um, because I I think probably what I'm thinking is that if I get a metal saucer, I can accelerate. Um I'm also thinning my deck out, getting very useful cards like the metal goggles. I'm gonna have two metal goggles now. I'm gonna have a coating energy, I'm gonna have multiple energy in my hand. Um we're we you know, we're gonna have the energy to full metal wall, assuming I don't get Marnied. So I'm guessing what I'm thinking here. I think this is actually a mistake. I should have attached the other metal energy first, but I already had a metal metal energy in the graveyard, right? So if I grab the metal saucer, we're actually gonna be fine, even if that metal energy got hammered away. Um, we do all that, and we intrepid sword, finding an energy for Zashian. So we've got a good amount of energy spread around. We have the metal saucer right there. So if he's not able to alter creation, we could very easily. Intrepid Sword, boss up, and kill Azashia next turn. If he's not able to alter creation. He's going to switch in. Does he find the Metal Energy? Finds the Bench Barrier Mew. Does he put that down on? No way. Okay, he just doesn't need it. So he did Dene's. His He's completely benched out. He's got a ton of beautiful targets that just love to be Intrepid Sorted on the bench. Two Dedenes, two Zashians, a Crobat V. He is just looking to be Dedene. He does have the Marnie, though. The Dastardly Marnie. I had the Nuts in my hand. He Marnies it away. <laughs> Not great. Um, he's going to be able to alter Creation GX. I don't have a Metal Energy now. It's looking a little iffy. Just a little iffy. But there's got to be a way out of this, right? Maybe not. I mean, I don't have any draw cards in my hand. I don't have anything to quick ball for in terms of drawing cards. We're not playing Crobats. We're not playing Dedenes. What is my, what am I thinking? I, we're really stuck. I mean, that's the thing is that we have no draw cards. He married us into probably the perfect dead hand for him, right? Cape of Toughness on to the Aegis Slash. It doesn't really prevent him from dying, though. The problem with the tape of Cape of Toughness onto the Aegis Slash, Cape of Toughness is really meant for the Zamazenta, right? Because the tape, Cape of Toughness onto the Aegis Slash puts him at 260, which is that magic number that the Zashian hits with the Altered Creation uh, Empowered Brave Blade. We are in a quick ball, see what we have in the deck, seeing that, you know, 
We're not really seeing any trainer cards. I mean, tons of trainer cards we could use, but none that we can get. We go and grab the Zashian because we know how important it is to have two powered up Zashians. So we're probably thinking that that's what we're going to want to do. We're probably going to have to alter... Oh, Intrepid Sword. And we just go straight into the Intrepid Sword, okay. And we draw two Marnies. So we have the draw card for next turn. Maybe you should have considered switching out into the... Into the Lily's Poke it all to try and not lose three prize cards here. But I guess here's a, here's the thought process, though. Even if he kills my Aegislash with, like, an Intrepid Sword or something, we're very easily just going to be able to Marnie next turn, right? So we don't really have the necessity to go for that. Uh, I don't know why my opponent plays it this way. He decides to not go for the ultimate ray. He attaches to the Zashian on the bench. And I think this is really the game losing play for my opponent. Because if he was able to just attach to... I mean, maybe he's thinking... Actually, I didn't think about this until just now. He's probably thinking he might not even have enough energy in the deck. Like, he's desperately thinking that even if, if I if I attach this to the Archeosile of Palkia, even if I ultimate ray, say I'm only able to accelerate one, like maybe three energy, I'm about to get full metal walled. I'm going to lose all three of the energy that I attach to the Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia. So he's probably thinking that with only 10 cards left in his deck, he needs to be a little conservative. So I actually get this. I, I wasn't fully paying attention. Did he Marty me again? I think he must have Marty me again, which actually Marty me into a really good hand. We get to Mallow and Lana into the um, Lucario and Melmetal here. So we're going to get to Full Metal Wall off of the ADP. We go and get the Zashin to thin our deck a little bit before we draw next turn. And we've left our opponent with a Arceus Algapalkia that is basically stuck in the active. He's going to need to switch to retreat because he's, I mean, he's going to need to switch to get out of there because he's not going to want to you know, attach an energy to have to retreat with that air balloon. He's going to have to give up a one energy even to use that air balloon to retreat. So my opponent is really stuck trying to power up this uh, Zashian on the bench now. That's really all he has. So, you know, maybe it's a strategic, smart strategic play from my opponent. You know, I'm looking through his deck trying to see he's already used all four hammers. All four hammers are used for the rest of the game. I do not have to worry about losing my energy. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling completely in the driver's seat of this game. I don't see how I lose this with only nine cards left in my opponent's deck, and he's just trying to power up. He's even intrepid sorting himself down to six cards. I see how much energy he's used, and I'm thinking right here um, that we're going to be able to power up our Zashian all the way, have that bad boy ready to go. He cannot be killed because my opponent has not played his intrepid sword yet. I mean, he has intrepid sword somewhere in the deck, right? But he hasn't played it yet, so he needs boss intrepid sword energy um, in order to kill my Zashian. So it's a, maybe a little risky putting that final energy on the Zashian. Maybe should have spread that out a little bit. Um, we are going to play our Zashian on the bench. And then Professor's away an empty hand. That gets us into a Metal Saucer. Metal Goggles. Switch. We have the boss for next turn. We are feeling like we are in a fantastic spot. I mean really the only risk that we're running here. That probably was not best strategically. Is if I had done things differently, I would have put down the Zashian and energy onto the Zashian. That way, if he did energy switch boss, kill my Zashian on the bench, I wouldn't have lost a fully powered Zashian. Here, you know, we just power everything up. We're waiting till next turn, really. Um, we get to Steel Fist, soften up the ADP that will now die to a Brave Blade. And we get to attach uh, energy from our deck to our Lucario Melmetal, making him all the more enticing to try to attack. And again, we're still feeling in driver's seat. As long as we don't see a boss come down, we're feeling really great. I want to say my opponent even has to Mari. He only has five cards like left in his deck. This is definitely... I mean, ADP can win fast, but I think he's going to have a hard time winning within the next five turns. I'm, I'm definitely still feeling really great about my position in this game. He's in a Metal Saucer. So there's the energy we need, or he needs. He does attach it to the other Zashian, though. So does he have a metal in his hands that he's going to be attacking? Attaching. He's all spread out. Okay, he has another Metal Saucer, so he gets another energy back. He's going to have a fully powered Zashian there and ready to go. He just has to Intrepid Sword, though. He doesn't have the switch. I, I don't remember looking in his graveyard how many switches he's had, but he's down to two cards. 
This is getting very close to Scoop City for my opponent. We have one Metal Energy in the graveyard, so we need to be a little careful. We don't. We have two Saucers, but not the ability to accelerate two energies. We do have the ability, though, that if we manually retreat our Lucario Melmetal, we will have two energies in the graveyard to accelerate and get this Zacian ready to go. So we're just going to manually retreat, put some energy in the graveyard. Lucario Melmetal has done his job. We're able to accelerate twice to the Zacian, and then we're going to boss up his fully charged Zacian and knock it out with our own Brave Blade. He's not going to be able to get a return knockout here um, because we have the Full Metal Wall and the Metal Goggles. He's going to need either a Tool Scrapper or... The Intrep the Rusted Blade, which could potentially be prized for him, you know. Off the top, we do pull another energy, so we're feeling really good that we're gonna be able to. He has to throw the crowbat out. I imagine he's maybe gonna want to try to go back into the ADP, but even that we're gonna be able to kill with a Brave Blade. We're just gonna be able to attach this metal energy to our Zashian, use the switch card to put the new the new Zashian from the bench onto the field and just absolutely take out whatever our opponent has left up. Every single thing on his side of the field dies to a Brave Blade. He does have a boss's orders that he gets back with the Elder Gloss. Let's see, is he gonna boss up the Aegislash? Try and take three prizes here. That looks like the plan for my opponent. The only problem with this is that once I kill this, <laughs> once I revenge kill, the Zashian, he has no energy left on his side of the board, so I don't know what could he be digging for that's likely prized for him that he needs. Does he rip it off of his prizes? Maybe a Marnie? He only has one card left in his deck. Let's see, we're going to be able to power plant, so if it was anything related to a Pokemon, he's not going to be able to do it. We're going to Metal Energy um, Accelerate onto our bench from the graveyard with the metal saucer then we're going to be able to get back the uh boss's orders again with the Cynthia and caitlin just like we did in the first game super fantastic that means that we are putting our opponent basically on checkmate if he's not able to manipulate my hand at all he is in trouble um we attach just for funsies to the active i think the idea there is that if we are out of switches um, we're able to retreat and still have two energy on the Zashian. So then if we have to retreat again, we only take one more energy to power him up. So we just need to, you know, cycle these Brave Blades. Our opponent's seen enough, and he's going to scoop it up. All right, so that's it for the matches. I was, as you can see, and we talked about, able to take the 2-1 victory against Druda Fox, one of the best players in my local game shop scene. I game involved El Paso. Super excited to win this first round. I'm feeling really good. It was a matchup that I... Knew really well, felt really, really great about. Uh, we dodged a lot of crushing hammers, which is super awesome. And the fact that we were able to take the 2-1 victory um, felt really good. And we'll go into our next round. I'm going to be posting that next round in a little bit here um, at, at a day or two. And we're going to go through all the rounds that I played and kind of review and see how this went. So if you like more of this content, feel free to subscribe. And it'll have more coming to you soon also on this channel. We post card opening videos. We post live tabletop action. So if you want to see that, feel free to keep watching. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.